What's going on, people? Thanks for tuning in to the MMA Podcast, episode 239. It is Monday, July 30th, and we're here to break down UFC Calgary. Went down a couple days ago there at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Looks like a big spaceship out there in the middle of Western Canada. Joined as usual by Sweet Pappy Jones. Pat, what's going on, dude? Oh, Jake, we are just hanging out here, sweltering in the SoCal deserts. It's hot, it's humid, but dang it, it's July. Almost through July, looking into August, and uh, going to be looking forward to uh, our first card of August. Should be a doozy there, Jake. Indeed, and Mr. Pickles there in the back background, also ready to break down uh, UFC Calgary. Actually, a really fun card, UFC on Fox 30. Um, we'll start as usual with the prelims. The fight of the night was the main event of that UFC fight pass card. John McDessie versus Ross Pearson, a unanimous decision to McDessie, but like a lot of us expected <clears throat> a lot of fun back and forth on, on, uh, that fight. Um, a lot of decisions, but, uh, a lot of, you know, spirited back and forth. Nina and Sarov defeating random Marcos at straw weight via unanimous decision. Dustin Ortiz and Caitlin Chugagin bat in the win column. Um, <clears throat> then on the 6 o'clock prelim Fox card, Ian Kutalaba, uh, I always have a problem with his last name, with a first-round TKO. Islam Makashev with a first-round armbar over Cajun Johnson. <clears throat> the uh, young prospect Hakeem Dewodu looking real impressive in a one-sided decision against Austin Arnett. And Jordan Meehan defeating Alex Morano via unanimous decision. Uh, what stood out to you on the fight pass and Fox prelims? Jake, everything stood out to me. This was a super fun card. Really the antithesis of uh, last week's decision fest where uh, we had, what was it, three finishes and 13 fights or something like that. It was it was crazy. This one was uh, very, uh, very finish friendly. Uh, the ones that went to decision were, were some good scraps. And, um, I mean, the the fights really just started out super strong. For me, uh, Dustin Ortiz getting a, a KO a head kick over Matthias Nicolou in the first round. Uh Pretty rare to see, you know, those finishes in the flyweight division. Uh, Dustin Ortiz, super strong prospect at 125. I mean, he's really been hovering around the top 10, top 5 for pretty much as long as flyweight has been around. Um, and I feel like he's really, man, he's he's looking better and better these days. Um, I feel like this, this has got to put him close to a shot with Demetrius. Um, or I should say whoever the winner of... Uh, the fight between Demetrius Johnson Johnson and Henry Cejudo is um, great performance there. Um, Chukagian uh, taking out a tough Alexis Davis. John McDessey versus Ross Pearson. That was just a super fun fight. Um, fireworks the whole time. Uh, and Islam Makachev getting a nice R bar over Cajun Johnson. Um, for me, though, man, Ion Kutaleba, also very noteworthy, getting that uh, TKO over Getsin Murad and Tigulov. Uh, very nice finish there. Um, good uh, good prospect at the 205-pound division. Um, that makes it uh, two in a row at this point with uh, two KOs slash TKOs um, for Mr. Kutaleba. Or K- Kutaleba? Kutaleba? I, 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 oh, well. Tomato, tomato. A rose by any other name. Um, yeah, fantastic uh, slate of preliminary actions. Great fights all the way around. Jordan Mean versus Alex Morano. Good scrap between a couple of young welterweights. Uh, really set the tone very well for the main card on Fox. And uh, that first fight on the main card, Alexander Hernandez trying to prove to the world he was not just a one-punch wonder. You know, he was subbed in for Bobby Green uh, to face Benny Rush, no one had really heard of him, and he gets this quick first round knockout. Um, and I th- and I really like the match m- making here. Uh, you know, this is this is a guy in uh, um, Aubon Mer- Mercier who I think <clears throat> was on a four fight win win streak. But more importantly, it's 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 going to check the ground. You know how how uh, good Her- Fernandez was on the ground 
in in the clinch, and even maybe more importantly, his uh, stamina and car- cardio to be able to get through a 15 minute fight. Um, <clears throat> and Hernandez passed every test here. He beat Olivier basically on every front, not just striking as as we all expected, but he uh, he looked tremendous on the ground, tremendous in the clinch. Um, said later in a uh, post-fight presser that he was displeased with his per- performance, wanted to look better, but uh, won the fight 30-27, 29-28, 29-28 over the tough Canadian Aubon Mercier. Um, you know, this is a, 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 a 155-pound division that's already so, you know, ripe with uh, talent. You know, Dustin looks like one of the best fighters in the UFC, and I guess technically he's just fourth in his own division. So this is a young guy in Hernandez. I think he's 25. Um, Exciting to see where his career will go from here. I mean, you know, he uh, just took took on a guy and beat a guy on a four-fight win streak. So, you know, I definitely expect a ranked opponent next in what is a, a beefy lightweight division looks like we have another young prospect yeah that we do uh definitely very bright young prospect in uh, alex hernandez i mean i i thought this was going to be a great list litmus test for him uh as you mentioned jake uh coming off a, a big ko over betty el uh early ko um you know who is one of the strongest grapplers at 155 pounds and uh, UFC matched him up again with another very strong grappler in OAB, um, Obam Mercier, uh, definitely, um, who had actually shown some good wrinkles in his game and uh, some good new wrinkles in his game in his last fight out um, against Evan Dunham, finishing him with, uh, with a TKO. Um, traditionally, again, being more of a heavier, uh, heavier grappler, but uh, had been increasing as well around this. And man, Alex Hernandez just... Um, outpointed him at every single step of the way, um, striking, grappling, um, outpaced him, um, fantastic cardio. It looks like a pretty friggin' big 155 pounds, too. I mean, I felt like uh, Olivier Obon Mercier was one of the bigger 155 pounders, and I was like, God, Alex Hernandez looks like he might even be bigger than, than Mercier. Um, and man, he just super impressed me. Was able to just grind him down. Um, I thought it was a, a fairly, a fairly handily, uh, handily one fight for Alex. Um, definitely looking like a very buff prospect at 155 pounds, figuratively and literally. Yeah, for sure. Um, sticking in what was a uh, very fun main card, the next fight was an interesting one. The former champ Joanna and Jacek taking on Tisha Torres, uh, breaking down the fight with Allen. You know, I, uh, thought stylistically the fight would favor Yen Jacek just because she's, uh, such a, such a tech technical striker has such a great jab. And Tisha is small even for 115, and would really need to get, get in there and work the clinch, which to her credit, she did at various points in the fight. I uh, thought, thought Tisha, even though she lost, I thought she looked uh, pretty Im- impressive. Um, you know, folks forget that before the UFC opened up this uh, women's strawweight division, Tisha was over in Invicta beating all these girls' asses. Like she was one of the top. Like she, she, she was dominant in 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 Invicta. And I don't know what happened if if there there were just you know skill sets that other girls picked up, but they kind of caught up to, and for a while there seemed to pass Tisha. You know, I mean, Tisha, I believe, has a win from Invicta against Doug Rose, but obviously, right right now, uh, Rose is in a. Uh, higher position than Tisha is as the champ. Um, but, you know, this this uh, this fight for Yin, Yin Jacek and, and also in the next fight, uh, the former featherweight champ, Ho- Jose Aldo, um, for both of them, it was kind of a test to see if they had lost a step. You know, bo- bo- uh, both of them were pretty pro- prolific champions and now had lost two in a row to the current champ, 
uh, Yin, Yin, Yin Jacek and losing two to Thug Rose and Aldo and losing two to Max Holloway. Um, but sticking to this one fight, Yuana versus Tisha, um, well-earned 30 to 27 victory. E- even though I thought Tisha looked good, she had her moments. Um, this was all Yin Jacek. And she proved, you know, that uh, she is, um, and I guess what what she wants to do is get one more crack at Rose uh, or whoever has that straw weight belt and then move up to 25, which I would be licking my chops to to see her fight a ton of uh, current flyweights, especially Valentina Shevchenko. That would be a hell of a scrap. But um, <clears throat> back to the present day uh Yoana with the impressive victory and lines herself up uh, probably, I would say, for one more fight before she gets uh, one more crack at the belt. Um, Pat, what did you make of Ian Jacek Torres? Ian Jacek Torres was, for me, about as close a fight as I think you can get. For, I mean, it was just... The first round was almost all just jockeying for position, a lot of battling for underhooks and uh, a lot of reversals up against the cage, lots of pressure. Both ladies were uh, were hitting each other with strikes in the clinch. Um, super close fight, uh, really all the way around. Um, this this was one when it was going to the judges' scorecards, and I said, man, I could see this going any kind of way, you know, with mixed martial arts. Um, sometimes the judges are like, well, Tisha was on her the whole time. Let's give her the fight, even if nothing really happened. And then sometimes they say, well, Yin Jacek defended every takedown. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll give her the fight this time. Strikes was pretty, I mean, I feel like Tisha landed some of the better shots. Uh, Yin Jacek had the volume on her. Um, but especially towards the end of that second round, Tisha probably hit Joanna with what I recall being the best shots of the fight. Um, and, you know, Tisha definitely was, was not out of that fight by any means. And, and I think um, it was certainly a lot closer than the uh, 30-27s would indicate. It was, for me, about as razor thin of a fight as it gets. This one was just super close. Both of these ladies um, very evenly matched. Um, Joanna getting back into the win column for me was, mm, I don't want to say underwhelming because, you know, again, she did stop the super crafty Tisha at every turn with all of her takedowns. Um, but, you know, it was uh, it was just such a hard fought fight. Very close. Um, that one could have gone either way. And I could see these ladies fighting each other again sometime soon. Uh Jake, as you mentioned, I mean, both of these ladies have fought Rose Nami Yunus twice. Uh, Joanna lost to her twice, uh, and Tisha beat her in Invicta, but then lost to her in the UFC in one of Tisha's first UFC fights. Um, she's definitely been able to build up the momentum since then, um, but it would certainly be interesting to see what would happen uh, if those two ladies ever fought. Unfortunately, now Tisha, she's on a two-fight losing skid. Um, having lost to Andrade and Yin Jacek, uh, two of the toughest women in 115. But um, yeah, good, good fight. Super close, man. These these ladies are both uh, top class at 115. And uh, yeah, it was uh, that was a fun fight. Good matchmaking there. Um, another fight that I love the matchmaking for: Jose Aldo versus Jeremy Stevens. Um, <clears throat> you know this. This was a potential career-defining fight for Jeremy Stevens, who has has had such such an up and down career. You know, he's he has uh, made many title runs in the uh, past, but uh, but I um, I uh, you know it 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 seems like every time he got to to that uh, level, he would get knocked down a couple a couple stubs. But uh, had strung together three big wins against Gil Melendez, Duho Choi, and Josh Emmett, and was getting Jose Aldo, who was coming off those two losses 
to Max Holloway after uh, getting uh, getting that interim championship back, defeating Frankie Edgar, and later being promoted back to that un- undisputed uh, champion status that he had lost losing to Conor McGregor. Um, and uh, yeah, like like I kind of mentioned before, similar to the Yin Jacek fight, this was a big test as far as seeing had Ho- Jose lost a step, was he still in true champion form? And he definitely proved the latter. Uh, TKOing Jeremy Stevens, uh, his uh, s- surprisingly his first uh, finish since uh, defeating Chan Sung Jung via TKO at UFC 163 almost five years ago. Um, getting this win, huge victory for Al- Aldo, um, who just landed this body shot that just absolutely took all the air out of uh, it was it was it was tough tough to watch because we've all had had that feeling where you know if if it's just just from falling or getting hit hit, hit by uh, something just all the air gets knocked out of you and that punch uh, absolutely deflated Jeremy Stevens in more ways than one followed it up with strikes and uh, it was waved off four minutes in 19 seconds into the fight uh you know it had it had been a fun fight going into that i would say aldo probably would have won the first round pretty dis- decidedly 10-9 had it gone another 40 seconds so the fight was going aldo's way and uh he he puts a stamp on it uh what did you think i uh, know you were pro- probably a uh, a a Bit bum knowing you're a fan of the heathen, but uh, you know he 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 by 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 no means would I discredit someone that much for taking a loss to uh, an all time great like Jose Aldo. Ditto, ditto, absolutely, Jake. I mean, you can't uh, you can't really take a whole lot away from the little heathen for for falling to Jose Aldo like that. Uh, I mean, really, Jose Aldo, I've been a huge fan of him. I mean, anybody who watched WEC back in the day uh, and saw Jose Aldo rise through the WEC and what he was doing there, like, I mean, I was a huge fan of him from back then. And ever since his first UFC fight against Mark Hominick, uh, I've, I've been a big fan of Jose. Just great style, super exciting to watch, um, you know, not – not a guy we hear a lot of bad press about or anything like that. Seems like a, a legit good dude. And I mean, Jeremy Stevens, how could you not be a fan of his fighting style? I mean, that guy uh, is just just a beast. And man, this fight, it was great for as long as it lasted. Uh, you know, Jeremy, I thought he popped him with some shots. My had Aldo hurt a little bit early there. I, um, you know, I was really going back and forth, you know, as, as, I thought the the momentum was going Steven's way. I was getting super stoked. I, you know, I thought the little heathen was going to do it. But then as Jose came back, and oh, my God, those combinations. I said, you know, then I started leaning a little towards towards Aldo. I said, oh, man, Aldo's on the comeback now. And uh, to put Jeremy down with that body shot to the liver, that left, that was just freaking pinpoint. And you saw it shut him down. Aldo falls up. Lots of ground to pound, smothering the smothering top game action there on Stevens and Stevens was he was on his back taking some big shots and he rolled to his knees slash stomach and looked like he was attempting to get up you know he rolled he ate a couple more shots to the dome and at that point the ref jumped in waved it off I believe it was Eva Levine waving it off and um, Jeremy was instantly upset and I mean I could kind of see it he was um you know, he was at least working towards getting up. Granted, I mean, you know, how many times do, should you be allowed to absorb strikes for every position change? You know, that's, it's a fine line. But he was certainly upset with the savage. Uh, not unseen, not unheard of, but very rare that a fight gets stopped when a fighter's actively working towards their feet. I mean, Ben Rothwell versus Cain Velasquez is really the only other fight I, I can recall off the top of my head, which was a fantastic stoppage in that one. But um, this one eh, could have gone a little bit longer. Uh, you know, we talk about it all the time. All, 
I'll always err on the side of uh, fighter safety. I sure know little heathen wanted that one to go longer, but um, you got to tip your cap to Jose Aldo, man. The the former champ, the former 145 pound great, uh, put on a great performance against uh, a friggin' uh, a murderer at 145 pounds of Jeremy Stevens. So props, props to Jose. He still got it, Jinky. And I did want to clear one more thing up. Um, I got a lot of flack on Twitter because after the fight, I I tweeted "Take the L" in all caps, and a lot of folks could, thought thought that that was me talking shit to uh, Jeremy Stevens, who I respect a ton. I would never, I wouldn't, would never say anything that uh, that dis- disparaging to to uh, someone like like Jeremy Stevens. What I was referring to is right after they they raised uh, Ho- Jose's arm. He uh, put put an L on on his forehead and started kicking his legs back and forth, which is a Fortnite little dance meme. And the name of that dance is the Take the L dance. So I uh, I was chuck- chuckling that Fortnite's gotten so big that uh, now fighters are are doing Fortnite dances. I think so. Someone did the same dance. I think Greetsman, the uh, the guy for uh, France, also did the take. The L dance during the World Cup. Um, also, I do need to make a correction from last episode um, pertaining to the next topic: Dustin Poirier versus Eddie Alvarez. What a fight! Again, I mean, just uh, a cup couple warriors. I guess I said last episode that they were tough coaches, which uh, I actually for a, se- a sec- second there I thought they were. I. Uh, no, they weren't because it was Stipe versus Cormier. But I think news, like, I think a rumor floated out there like four or five months ago that they were going to be the next coaches for tough. Um, and I think my mind kind of grabbed that and ran with it. But, uh, yeah, as a correction, they were not tough coaches, although they obviously had fought once before. And um, kind of similarly to the last fight, a uh, very very great back back and forth war. You had uh, spots where uh, Eddie looked like he was piecing up Dustin, especially there um, there before. Pardon me before the uh, referee broke them up due to an illegal twelve to six elbow. Um, who I I uh, read recently that Mark Hen- Henry uh, went on and took the blame for that strike, even though you know it. It wasn't just the el- elbow. It was the fence grabbing. It was the ear grabbing um, that led to the stand up. And then after the stand up, Dustin just with a street fighter like com- combo landing. I mean, like this 12 or thir- 13 punch com- combo, which included uh, four, just these uh, four killer lefts that uh, put Eddie on roller skates and ended up finishing the fight. But, um, you know, whether I would call Eddie a dirty fighter, which I wouldn't, I think he needs to be more disciplined. I think that's the issue. I, it's, it's not a mad matter of him being dirty or not because the moves that he's doing and fouling with are unlike eye pokes. These, these are moves that if, if, if rules weren't in place, you would be naturally doing. Whether it, it's, it's a north to south strike or grabbing the cage for more leverage, or throwing a knee to a downed guy. This is, you know, in 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 just a prim- primalistic street fight. You're you're you know kind 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 of just going off of uh, your basic instincts there. So, you know, I I don't think he's dirty, but he obviously needs to in future fights fight with more discipline because. This uh, got him into trouble and was the reason why the first fight was a no contest. And this time around, uh, obviously, um, led to the stand-up, which ended up uh, removing him from a very advantageous position. And I don't know if he uh, he, he had an energy dump or what, but uh, Dustin roared back and obviously finished the fight in amazing fashion, getting the performance of the night bonus for 50k along with the former champ Jose Aldo um 
what do you make of the fight? Uh, it was it was a nom- nominee for fight of the year, even though it uh, only lasted nine minutes. Um, hell of a war between uh, a couple of legendary lightweights. Yeah, that indeed it was. Uh, I mean, these guys were letting it all hang out for nine minutes. Uh, pretty much everybody got exactly uh, what they expected with this fight. Just a great war. I mean, it was exactly like their uh, Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier's fights with Justin Gaethje. I mean, 100% as advertised, as billed. And, um, yeah, for as long as it lasted, oh, man, Eddie Alvarez and, and Dustin, they uh, they traded a little bit there. Uh, Eddie got, uh, got Dustin a few times. Uh, but Poirier, man, I think... Um, you know, I think he knew he wanted he wanted that fight back. Uh, you know, and kind of like it was in um, in their first matchup. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Dustin must have had the feeling that Eddie wanted out of that fight with those illegal knees because he had hurt Dustin in that first fight, which was so perplexing to me the entire time. He had Dustin hurt with legal shots, and then he ends up throwing these just egregious knees to a downed opponent. Um, that under no rules of, you know, under no interpretations of the rules of mixed martial arts would those needs be allowed. And he hauls off with like two of those to his downed opponent when he probably could have just been teeing off with some punches, you know, and, and, and might have uh, had a chance at, at, um, at stopping that fight. But it just, the illegal knees, and I don't know if Dustin was picking up on this or, or what or myself, but definitely... That is that is a pure desperation move, a hundred percent. I think he wanted out of that fight, and he wanted out of that fight for a reason. And I think we saw that reason in this rematch was that just ultimately, Dustin Poirier just a little too much for Eddie. Just the height, the reach. Um, Eddie was able to close that gap a couple times, um, but just the, the game plan didn't go his way. You know, the twelve to six elbow costing him the position. Certainly was a, a crucial misstep there, um, but you know, to to Eddie Alvarez's credit, uh, you know, this is another another fight where the fight ending sequence had a couple of legal shots in it. If I'm not mistaken, I could have sworn I seen Dustin Poirier e knee Eddie Alvarez right in the dick in that ending sequence, and then follow it up with an immediate cage grab for more leverage to a high kick, which is essentially back-to-back illegal maneuvers. And the fight was essentially just allowed to finish. Um, so, you know, and again, very similar to the first one with Eddie. You know, Eddie had Dustin Rock with legal shots, followed it up with some illegal fight any shots. Now, it wasn't the illegal shots that ended the fight with this. I mean, you know, Dustin started hurting Eddie with legal shots. Um, he ended it with legal shots. You know, the, the head kick that he was grabbing the fence for, I don't think that one connected super flush. Um, again, for me, the knee to the dick definitely seemed to connect pretty flush. Um, but again, there was a couple illegal fight ending maneuvers in this fight. So um, I don't know if it really classes as much of a, or cl- casts as much of a, a question mark on this on this fight as perhaps it did the first one, but um, just never the way you want to see a fight end. I mean, I'd like to have things definitive, nice, no controversy. And dang, we got a little bit of that again this time. Um, Super fun fight. It's, it's the two times they've done it. Uh, It's been super violent and super fun as brief as they both been. Um, I'm not saying they should do a first one, but if they did, I think, feel like it would not be unwarranted well uh before we end this episode you know the obvious question is what's next for dustin poirier um dana has said that he wants tony ferguson to fight on the same card as connor and habib which has been rumored i think for the early december card in las vegas or something like that um which if they put tony on a card with Connor and Habib, what seems to make the most sense to me is have Con- Connor Habib obviously for the title, and have Tony fight Dustin for that next spot in line, and then the lightweight 
division, which has seemed so jammed up and clogged for the longest time, will actually be kind of cleared up. You have Connor and Habib fighting for the crown, and the next shot goes to the winner of uh, Tony and Dustin. Tony seems like he'll be uh, ready in four months by early December. Uh, you down with that? Or do you have other plans for Dustin? Oh no! I think uh, I think that's a, a super duper idea. I mean, Poirier, uh, Poirier versus Ferguson, um, fighting uh, you know nice little backup under the uh, the Conor Habib. Uh, I mean, I think that's just about as perfect as it could be. If if there's any injuries any other way, I mean, you got a couple of rematches that could be made there. Obviously, Conor and Dustin fought um, at 145 pounds. Um, and obviously Habib and Tony has been tried to, that's a match they've tried to make four times now. So um, that could actually potentially happen if, you know, if they booked it as such. Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, sorry. Oh no. uh, Yeah. I I think that would be uh, the smartest way to go. Uh, And especially if they're doing, if they're doing like an end of the year, December ish card, um, I think that would uh, give, give Poirier time to, to heal his wounds. And like you mentioned, if Connor or Habib get injured, you can slot t- Tony up. Uh, you, you, you could slot Dustin up. You uh, could put another lightweight fight on that card as like the prelim feature to, to uh, slot up into the main card. If you have to move guys around lots of possibilities there. Um, but I think that's, we're going to, that's where we're going to leave it um, for UFC Calgary. Uh, we will be back soon. Obviously, UFC 227 um, coming up around the corner this Saturday. So, yeah, we will be back later on this week to preview UFC 227, talk about any MMA news and all that. Um, if you have been following us on Twitter, you probably saw the tragic news that uh, this weekend we lost one of our own, um, a good friend of ours, former co-host, of this show, loved by all of us, Ramses, uh, on Twitter at the Aunt Jimmy Show, um, unfortunately passed away uh, this past weekend. So uh, send send prayers to his family down in Texas. I know they would appreciate that. And uh, in the future, I think we might try and do some roundtable shows. Bring uh, bring some old familiar voices back talk a little MMA uh, for Ramsey's sake. Ramsey's, uh, wherever you are, we love and miss the shit out of you already, brother. Uh, until the next show, we gone.